Some while ago I made a video about the infantry platoon and I used as my example the British infantry platoon of World War II. And you can see that video here should you be so interested. Now I'm going to talk about tank platoons. Yes, tanks went around in platoons as well. And in common with infantry platoons, a tank platoon was about the largest size of unit that could be commanded in detail by one man. So it's a natural size of unit if you like. Uh, now in World War II the, the most common number of tanks in a platoon, uh, which was very often called a troop in the British Army, but a troop of tanks, a platoon of tanks, it's near enough the same thing, let's not get too hung up on uh, nomenclature, was three tanks. So you'd have a command tank and two junior tanks. Um, but in 1944 um, it was thought that a lot of the standard guns of the day were a little bit weak and so they very often brought in a fourth vehicle with a 17 pounder this is uh, an Achilles for instance which uh, had a 17 pounder uh, or uh, perhaps a Firefly which also had a 17 pounder this is to beef up the uh, anti-tank capability of the troop um, a 17 pounder was a contender for the best anti-tank gun of the war it could put a hole through anything the Germans had in fact it would put a hole through all the way through and out the other side of a Tiger um, but the Germans unfortunately very quickly learned that these were the tanks that they had to prioritize when they were shooting and so the British uh, can you see here uh, they would camouflage the 17 pounder gun to look like a shorter and considerably less threatening uh, gun uh, how often that actually worked I couldn't tell you but that's what they tried to do but anyway the core of the tank platoon is three tanks it might be four I've heard of five it really seldom goes beyond that um, now you want to stay ideally within sight of each other but within sight might be you know, some reasonable distance apart um, they wouldn't be uh, fender to fender like this very often not if they could help it it makes too uh, dense a target for the enemy to spot um, so this man would position the various tanks in his platoon to cover various fields of fire and 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 protect each other and work in coordination with the infantry they were supporting doing whatever was required and three was about the greatest number of tanks that one man could command now um you're not just following the leader you're radioing in targets to each other you're, you're you're reporting sightings and so forth now if you had a very large number of tanks all trying to report to each other uh, the, the chatter over the radio would be horrendous so they cut it down and they cut it down with quite a nifty three radio system each of these tanks uh, was equipped with three radio systems now yes there were plenty of tanks in world war ii that didn't have any radios at all um, for instance a lot of early war french tanks no radios and so they were um, required to stay within close sight of each other and really just do follow my leader type stuff and if they did need to single signal to each other yes they actually would wave flags at each other that that was what they were reduced to but anyway um, in 1944 British and German stuff and American stuff uh, all had radios so uh, the radio discipline was the way that command was carried out so you have three radios in this tank um, but you don't have three microphones and three headsets and three lots of wiring that would be an awful lot of fuss so instead they just have one headset on each man each man has one microphone and the commander had a box with a switch on it and the switch had three settings IC for intercom A and B they're referred to as the A set and the B set. Now, the radio operator was also in a British tank, the loader. In a German tank, he would also be the hull machine gunner. So these tanks have got a uh, crew of five. They've got uh, two men downstairs, if you like, at the front, the driver, and in a British tank, the assistant driver, who was also the hull machine gunner. And he would take over from the, uh, the driver if the driver was tired, was wounded, uh, needed help with whatever it was. Uh, so he was the assistant driver. So you have two drivers at the front, one who operates the hull machine gunner. And in the turret, you have three men, the commander, the gunner and the loader who was also the operator so when you want to talk to the men in your tank uh, if you want to say uh, driver advance for instance because you want to move your tank forwards a bit you don't want everyone in your unit hearing driver advance every single driver thinking oh does he mean me no you just want to talk to your driver so you go click to the IC and say driver advance and then he will start advancing you see because he's been trained and he knows how to do this sort of thing um, this wasn't a foolproof system, unfortunately, because it was very easy to have your switch set to the wrong thing. So you might think that you're on the intercom, but you're actually on the B set uh, because you forgot. You were just talking to someone on the B set and you, you then uh, say to your driver, OK, driver, stop now. Stop now, driver. Driver, we're getting too close. Driver, driver, for goodness sake, why don't you... Driver, stop now! And uh, everyone else in your unit can hear you 
yelling at your driver, but your driver can't hear you. No, um, for a start, there's quite a noisy engine uh, in your tank, and um, he can't hear you in his in his ears because you're talking on the B set and you're not on the intercom. And this happened to almost everyone at some point. So even when the high command got really shirty, for goodness sake, you've got to discipline your men. We can't have people talking over the B set when when it's just a matter of clicking a simple switch. But then, at some point. Uh, Every commander, including the really senior ones, will have made exactly the same mistake. So people had to be with understanding. Um, the A set was for talking to the other tanks in your troop. So the commander could tell this guy to stick his tank there, this tank there, and they could cover each other and he could ask them, what can you see? He could organize perhaps a, a volley of shots all at the same target from his three tanks. And these men could chatter back and forth over the A set. But if you wanted to report to higher command, you would use the B set. So the B set was tuned to whoever was the higher command for that day. So where is this troop getting its orders? It might be from the regiment, the tank regiment. That might be the next unit up. So this will be talking the, over, the, over the B set to the regiment HQ. But then again, these are infantry tanks. Perhaps they had been assigned that day to support a particular infantry battalion, and perhaps the B set was tuned to the infantry battalion commander's radio. Being a radio operator in World War II was quite an involved job. Um, you had, uh, obviously, you had the A and the B set to maintain. Um, they were very delicate and prone to breaking and so forth. The frequencies were constantly changing, partly for security reasons, but also they used to just drift out of tune very easily. They were quite delicate and temperamental things. And of course, there's a lot of chatter that needs monitoring at all times. So being the radio operator was quite a, an important job. So the B set was for talking to uh, higher command, and the A set was for talking to the rest of your troop, and the intercom for talking to your own guys. So you can see how this could go wrong uh, both ways. So it, uh, it almost uh, uh, all, all tank commanders at some point, it seems, gave a long and detailed and, and you know, frankly praiseworthy worthy report uh, over what they thought was the B set to higher command, and they would. Uh, uh, click off and uh, you know, to think, well, did pretty well there. And then they would be disappointed because then they would hear the sarcastic voice of one of their crewmen saying, that was very good, sir. Now perhaps you'd like to do it again, but this time over the B set. Yeah. Now you may think that if someone is um, you know, yelling at his uh, driver to stop or chattering at great length over the B set when he shouldn't be, um, you could just radio him and say, for goodness sake, man, pipe down. But unfortunately, when you were broadcasting on the B set, you couldn't also be receiving on the B set. Um, so uh, the rest of the uh, unit would uh, listen to you. And of course, in training, this was hilarious. But on the battlefield, it was much more serious. So radio discipline had to be enforced. Uh, you couldn't have people chatting over the B set. Uh, that was uh, stamped on because what if a, an urgent message needed to get through? So the tank platoon, typically three tanks, maybe four, maybe five. Uh, it's the greatest number of tanks that one man can command in detail, knowing exactly where all the tanks under his command are at all times, what they can see and what they're doing. If someone uh, like this were trying to command 18 tanks spread over a very wide area. He wouldn't be able to see them all and they'd all be trying to report all sorts of different targets and uh, they'd be moving at different speeds and it would be hopeless. He would not be able to command that number. Then again, to be able to command three rather than just one tank made that you could have, meant that you could have three acting as a team and against some enemy target that was far more effective. So you get the advantages of working as a team but the team's not so big that it becomes uncommandable. The tank platoon. Did the